Biomechanics refers to the study of mechanical laws relating to the movement or structure of living organisms. Essentially, biomechanics contributes to the description, explanation and prediction of the mechanical aspects of human exercise. With a sound understanding of biomechanics related to golf, an athlete or a coach can diagnose problems with their technique, and thus make justified adjustments to their swing to improve overall performance, achieving maximum distance and accuracy. Now for the purpose of demonstrating the benefits of understanding biomechanics, I have compared footage of my golf swing to a professional's golf swing in order to identify and correct any errors I have, subsequently altering my technique so that each swing and shot will yield a more desirable outcome. In order to correct any errors in my swing however, there are five biomechanical principles that we should be aware of in golf and there are balance, summation of forces, impulse, center of percussion and spin. Now let's compare my golf swing to that of a professional's, side by side while analyzing the biomechanical principles that apply to each part of a golf swing. In the setup, both golfers have their knees bent and feet approximately shoulder width apart, providing a solid base of support. According to research, balance is the ability to maintain equilibrium against the forces of gravity to avoid falling over and involves three principles, base of support, center of gravity, and effective base of support. Base of support refers to the areas of contact with the surface and the disposition by which the body is supported. Therefore, the greater the base of support, the greater the balance and stability. Center of gravity is a point within or outside the body at which the body's mass is concentrated. Thus, by having a lower center of gravity by bending at the knees, a golfer's balance would be more stable, preventing them from falling over when swinging the club. The effective base of support is the distance between the gravity line and the limits of the base, where if the gravity line exceeds the limits, the person will be unbalanced and likely fall over or readjust their contact points to place the gravity line back inside the effective base of support. By maintaining good balance throughout a swing, a golfer will be able to hit the ball with more force and accuracy. Continuing on with the swing, the arms of both golfers are straight as the club head is brought back behind the head. It is crucial to have the arm straight while bringing the club head towards the front shoulder during the backswing as this increases the range of motion and subsequently impulse. Impulse is the change of momentum that occurs when a force is applied to an object, in this case when a golf club hits a golf ball. If force and time is increased, then velocity will also increase. Therefore, the range of motion in a club swing is important as applying a force for longer allows greater acceleration and produces more speed. This means that a longer backswing will result in a longer downswing, thus the club head will be moving faster at impact. In this case, the professional golfer has a greater range of motion than I do, allowing him to apply force on the club for a greater period of time and subsequently increasing the impulse of his swing, thus he is able to produce a more powerful shot that covers more distance than that of my golf shot. During the upswing, it is important that the hips rotate first, followed by arms rotating, then the wrists cocking. On the downswing, the hips rotate first yet again, legs moving forward as the golfer shifts their weight forward, followed by arms rotating and finally wrists uncocking, then contact with the ball is made as the club is followed through. It is important to have this sequence of movement as it is what makes summational forces so efficient and effective as it allows the forces generated by body segments to flow and accumulate without fail. As research suggests, summational forces refers to the use of as many body segments as possible to achieve maximum momentum, providing the fastest achievable velocity. Therefore, timing is important here, as the correct sequence of a body part movement is required to produce the best result by allowing energy and momentum to flow smoothly from point A to point B, allowing maximum power and impulse. By applying these forces to specific parts of a ball, a golfer will be able to manipulate high and low pressure points on the ball to cause curving, also known as spin. Spin refers to the Magnus effect in which the ball rotates corresponding to the pressure point as seen here. As both videos do not track the actual result in ball flight, the Magnus effect will not be discussed in depth. Summarizing the similarities between my swing and the professional's golf swing, both backswings are similar, though the professional has a wider range of motion which allows him to apply force for a longer period of time, increasing momentum and subsequently impulse, resulting in a more powerful golf shot that covers more distance than that of my golf shot. Both players have their weight shifting forward on the downswing, and the head moving only after the ball has been struck. The arms are kept straight with knees bent, allowing the ball to be hit in the center and not be chipped on the top or having the club hit the ground. There is one major flaw with my golf swing. To begin with, there is an error in my rotation where my lower body is not locked down, as seen from the lifting of the front leg. 
The result of this is that there is too much movement in my backswing, which hinders my summation of forces because the front leg moves during the backswing, disrupting the sequence of body movements and therefore disrupting the flow of forces through my body, resulting in a weaker golf shot. As my body rotated backwards, the club head on the backswing reaches a point parallel to my torso instead of being above my outer shoulder, removing the club from the swing plane and shortening the amount of time I had to apply force on the club and subsequently weakening the impulse of the swing. By not having the club within the swing plane, it resulted in a smaller range of motion and therefore further weakened the impulse of my swing. When my front leg moved in this direction, there is a shift in my center of gravity and weight distribution, where majority of my body weight is now supported on the back leg, effectively reducing my base of support by half, which in turn hinders my ability to produce a powerful shot. Although experts say that on the backswing, 75% of your weight should be on the inside of the back foot, my stance caused my back leg to carry more than 75% of my weight, as well as having some of the weight on the outside of the foot, causing instability and some shaking. Another indicator of being unbalanced is my head moving backwards during the backswing, when it should be over the ball and on the gravity line. Because of these errors, the swing had no contact on the sweet spot of the club, causing the shot to be inaccurate and failing to meet the kinetic potential of my swing. By being unbalanced, it made it difficult to throw my body weight forward into the swing without falling over, as demonstrated by this footage here. Thus the vol flight was weak compared to that of the professionals. If I correct the error in my swing where I failed to lock my lower body, then I'll be able to remedy all the problems that were a result of this initial error, as the front leg movement caused the domino effect in which all aspects of my swing were affected. By stabilizing the front leg so that there's little movement during the backswing, it will allow me to control my spine angle, keeping it the same during the backswing and having a straighter back. By having a straightened spine angle, the axis of rotation is lowered and allows my hips to be the main rotator instead of my torso, which would allow the club head to remain within the swing plane during the backswing. By preventing any lifting of the front leg, it allows me to maintain my base of support, where my center of gravity stays the same and does not move, thus reducing any shaking caused by a shifting center of gravity, in which my body would naturally try to rebalance itself. A straightened spine angle will also allow me to bring the club past the top of my head instead of bringing the club behind my back, thus improving my range of motion and subsequently the impulse during impact. By having a stable base of support during my swing, I'll be able to put more power into the swing without becoming unbalanced or unstable, allowing me to throw my body weight forward to increase the speed of the club head, thus producing a more powerful shot. Applying these technical changes to my swing will hopefully allow me to go from this to this. By having a thorough understanding of the biomechanical principles that relate to golf, I was able to identify, analyze, and rectify any errors within my swing. By applying these biomechanical principles to justify the adjustments I have made to my swing, improvements were seen in the resultant ball flight, where each shot became more accurate and powerful. Through improving my balance and stability, I was able to apply summational forces to its maximum effect, resulting in desirable impulse and center of percussion. Coupled with the Magnus effect, I will now be able to play through any golf course with ease. Through this video, it can be understood that biomechanics has a major significance to golf and sports in general, as it is a useful study that is beneficial to both athletes and coaches. Biomechanics allows the identification, analysis and correction of any inefficient body movements, providing the athlete the ability to improve his or her performance.